You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> The Gentle Embrace of Death by Dave Stancliffe Performed by Otis Gyrie Louis Morosi wasn't part of anyone's gang. It's true that Al Capone, Dion O'Bannon, and Bugs Malone all asked him, at one time or another, to drive trucks for him, but he turned them all down. He wanted to stay independent, no matter the cost. Not only was Louie an exceptional driver, he was a giant of a man. Six feet, seven inches, and 340 pounds. He was a specimen to behold. People thought Big Louie, as many called him, wasn't too bright. He seldom spoke, and when he did, he stumbled over words, going from Italian to American in the same sentence. His appearance, with a dark unibrow and jutting forehead, probably furthered the narrative about his low intelligence. He was slow to anger. He didn't drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes. The few friends he had were homeless and lived on the streets of Chicago. His daily challenge was to stay out of the way of warring gangs. Louis saw plenty of guys get gunned down in a hail of bullets from a passing car. The gangsters spent as much time killing each other as they did innocent victims. Dead men turned up all the time. It was that environment that gave Louis his chance to kill people without getting caught. He wasn't a violent killer, and he never used a gun. He preferred to put his victims to sleep in his firm, yet strangely gentle, chokehold. Unlike some sociopaths, Louis knew it was wrong to kill people, he justified his hobby by killing what he judged were bad men. He tried to keep the murders down to just a couple a week. With the rate of weekly murders in the streets of Chicago in 1931, two more a week were easily lost in the shifting statistics. In Louis's mind, he was doing his criminal victims a favor. They probably would have been violently killed by someone else. He was nice enough to make their passing painless and not traumatic. Even in that violent time and city, there were whispered rumors of a serial strangler stalking the streets. The police, aware of the rumors and the circumstances involving a string of choking victims, kept their eyes open for a suspect. One day his friend Leo emerged from the streets and hunted them down. I need your help, Louis, the shriveled old man pleaded. Sure, Leo. A couple of thugs in Bugs Moran's gang took Angelo this morning. They beat him up and dragged him into one of those big black cars and took off. Why'd they do that? Louis asked. I don't know for sure, but I think it's about a briefcase he found in an alley and they were looking for it. You sure Bugs' boys did it? Yeah, I happen to know a couple of them. Ran a few errands for them. I'll see what I can do. Come, amigo. As Louis walked back to where his truck was parked, he noticed a couple of thugs loitering around it. The first thing that went through his mind was Angelo convinced them he had the briefcase in order to stay alive. The normally calm and composed Louis was slowly melting away, as he watched them from the window of a shop he went inside of. He didn't like being threatened. He looked at both men closely, memorizing their faces. There was a rear exit in the shop, and Louis took it out to the alley. He knew where the Moran mobsters hung out. There was one location in particular, a house, that he suspected they'd taken Angelo to. It was a couple of miles away, but that didn't bother him. He liked a good, brisk walk. It helped calm him down. He didn't want to shed blood. He just wanted to gently put them to sleep in his powerful arms. He was right about the house. It was on a big lot and fenced in, but Louis had no trouble getting over the fence. As he got closer, he heard a muffled scream. 
Louis sat down and waited for hours until the moon climbed to the top of the sky before overpowering the sleeping guard on the front porch. He went through the front door, surprisingly quiet for a man of his size. He took care of the two thugs sleeping in the living room. He went to the cellar door and opened it. He softly descended the stairs. Another guard was asleep on a chair. Louis wished him sweet dreams and sending him to eternity. Angelo was a bloody pulp. His hands were tied behind him with twine and he was unconscious. Louis approached his body on the floor. He was laying sideways. He checked for a pulse and was surprised to find a weak one. Probably wasn't going to make it from the looks of his smashed skull. Louis sent him gently into the night. No one knew what happened at the Bugs Moran gang's house because it was engulfed by flames set by Louis that night. Locals said Moran's gang never bothered Louis again. Some say it was because Al Capone and his thugs took a lot of Bugs' time just trying to survive. Others say that Louis Marozzi was the most feared and famous killer in Chicago that the public never heard about. As it stands, this tale is a chapter out of the urban lore from Chicago's gangster days. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this story in its entirety. If you enjoy what you hear and what I do and would like to support me and my efforts, visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Otis Jiry. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button and subscribe today and share this video with everyone on your social media. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Again, thank you for listening and have a great day. God bless you.